Hi, welcome back. I'm Jennifer. This is Salve Salento. And what I wanted to help you with today is part two of that video that I started before that obtaining your Italian citizenship, but filing in Italy. So part one included all of the things that you really need to do before you can file in Italy. And that process is a little lengthy. Um, the longest part of that is waiting for the documents to come back. Some of them will come back fairly quickly, but if they're difficult for them to find, they may take a little bit while longer. So be patient, don't get you know stressed and upset, say, I'm still waiting for these documents. Things aren't happening really fast over in Italy. Don't worry about it. Once you get all of your documents together and everything is in order, then you can actually physically apply in Italy. So by now you would have gotten an attorney already in Italy that will be representing you to file your Italian citizenship there. Um, this process is way faster than waiting in the United States, waiting for an appointment or waiting for all of the other things to get done for them to process it. You don't have to wait three years for them to process your citizenship in Italy. It's six months. So, and you've done all the legwork, right? You've gotten all the documents, you've gotten all your paperwork, everything is in order. You filled out all of your lineage forms that the attorney will give you. They'll want to know, you know, your birth date and all of the birth dates of all of your relatives, and then they'll compile the case. They will get you a court date, depending on how long that that takes, but I don't think that it's very, very long, depending on where you're filing. Um, obviously, if you're filing somewhere like Rome or Naples, yes, that might be a little bit longer, but I believe that the attorney can file that anywhere near that area or in another area, in another court that's not so busy. So if you wanted to f live somewhere else, not in Rome, say your family was from Rome, you don't want to live in Rome while you're waiting, you want to live in southern Italy, you want to live in you know northern Italy, wherever, um, the attorney can file that case. You need to be in kind of that area near that court when uh, after you file because they may need you for something. They may need to ask you a question. They may need you to appear in front of them and say, you know, what about this? This doesn't seem clear. And um, it's a good idea to stay close by because those old documents, a lot of times they change their name from their Italian version of their name to an American version of their name, like, you know, Luigi to Lewis, you know, they, they did that. And their new doc, their new doc, newer documents compared to their birth record said Luigi, you know, Lewis, but that he was born Luigi, you know, why is he different? And, um, the attorneys kind of try to figure that out and say, well, he was in America and they didn't say Luigi, it was hard to say, so they called him Lewis and that's what they did. Um, and this is very important to know. If your attorney in Italy is asking you to file name changes, New York City will not accept any name change requests. So that is out. They cannot change the name on these records to reflect the newer name that they did and, or reflect the name of the birth record. That's out. It's kind of common sense that if the name was Luigi and it's Louis and they're doing it and all the other information is the same, then that's his name. You know, he just went by a nickname or a different name in America, but his legal name was still Luigi or whatever it was. So when you get your attorney and you get your appointment and that you ask them where they're going to file for you, then you need to find a place to live. So you need to be in Italy for 45, I believe it's 45 days, maybe 60. I will clarify that if anybody's having a question on that. The attorney will definitely know that you're hiring. Um, how long you need to remain there. So then you'll need to find a place to live for at least 45 to 60 days. Um, the attorney will actually let you know while you're there that you're all clear that you know they're processing the citizenship application and you don't need to remain there anymore. At this point, you can leave. So if you're still working and you can't work remotely, uh, this might be a little difficult for you to 
be able to, you know, pull together because you need to be away for 45 days. Um, so unless you can get some type of a short term leave or, you know, say I need to take an extended vacation for you know, a month and a half, then um, I'm sure everybody in your office is going to be really upset <laughs> that you're leaving for Italy for 45 days. Um, but that's what you need to do. So try to find a time of the year that you can actually pull this off and then schedule it with your attorney and say, I need to be, you know, done within this certain amount of time, um, maybe in the, sp in the spring or in the summer when things are kind of slowed down. So you are living there. You can stay while your citizenship gets processed for that time period of six months. So Say you're retired and you're like, I can go wherever I want. I don't need to be in the United States. I don't need to come back. I really don't want to go back in the summer. I would rather be in Italy in the summer or, you know, it's way too cold where I live in the winter. I want to stay in Italy for the winter. That's great. You're allowed to. So with that filing of the citizenship papers, you get a permesso di soggiorno. So the permesso allows you to remain in Italy while you are waiting for your citizenship to get completed you don't have to go to a consulate in the united states to get that they will give that to you when you file that citizenship in italy and then you can stay so no worries about having to leave fly back or any of that now once that attorney comes back to you and says you have gotten your citizenship okay you are allowed to stay here for as long as you want you can leave you can come you can go at this time while you're there if you can it would be very good idea in your best interest to apply for your passport at this time in italy so now that you're a citizen you got your citizenship in italy you're going to have your paperwork that you are a citizenship citizen, they're going to give you a birth record, an Italian birth record. It will look just like the one that you had gotten from your relative. So when you get all of these documents, there is a police station in the town where your um, where all of these things were happening, right? It, there's state police, the Polizia di Stato. So this office is the passport office and when you go online um, there's an actual passport Italian passport website that you can go on to and actually schedule an appointment to get your passport and they're not too it depends on where you are if it's busy they're not too booked up too far in advance obviously um, winter is a lot less than the summer when everybody's deciding to go away on vacation um, so on that website to be able to access that appointment you know portal that they have and the website's brand new it's actually really nice you can go on but you need something called an SPID so Italy uses for all of their official websites to access anything whenever you're going to access the um, health department whenever you're going to access anything that has to do with an appointment, um, the Ministero de, del Interno, where you would have any kind of access to government things, you need to have this SPID. And you can download an app on your American phone and apply to get this SPID number. And then you can use the app along with your email and these, these, all of these websites and portals that you'll need to access, um, they'll do some verification processes with you. And it takes a little while to learn it because you're like, they have me doing this two and three times and now I have to go into the email and check the app. But it's a little involved, but this is their security system that it's a good safeguard so that people can't access your benefits or your information or anything like that. So go on and get that SPID app. And then once you have that, you can log into this passport portal and create an appointment and then show up at the passport office 
with all of your documentation and your American passport because your American passport is really the only ID that they can accept because you don't really have Italian ID yet unless you've gone to the Comune and have gotten the Carta de Identità, the identity card, um, which I'm not exactly sure if you can get while you're waiting for your citizenship. So you're okay with your American passport and the permesso that you got from the attorney. Just now you need to take your American passport with you and go to the uh, police, the state police for your appointment with all of your documentation that says, yes, I'm a citizen and now I want to get my passport. And at this time, because this is what we did for Dennis, we didn't do any of that in the US. He got his passport in Italy. They will do fingerprints and they will take your picture and they will do all of these things. It's not super expensive. I think in Italy it was maybe 65 euros or 70 euros. It wasn't a lot. And you'll get your passport in Italy back in maybe about a month and a half, two months. It's a little long, but that's just how they work it. So if you have to leave and you can't stay, then just put another mailing address for your passport on your thing and have it sent to somebody that you know that's in that area or have it sent to your attorney if you're not gonna be there um, and they'll you know, be able to get your passport to you when it's when it's all ready so this is a long process I mean it seems like it's a little bit more involved doing it in Italy but it isn't um, the documentation is a little bit less and you don't have to uh, pay as much to get this done in Italy we're finding that it's about half of what your cost would be in the US um, especially for the cost of you know waiting all of those years for an appointment and then waiting all of those years to hear back and they really are running it down to the wire um, when we got our citizenship back we actually filed in the US but the time was only two years and our appointment was pretty quick to get it so we didn't have to wait as long but now because of the overload of people that are applying for citizenship and everybody's needing documents from New York City and they need documents from you know all of these different states that some of them are backed up and you might not get your documents in in the time you some people might not even get their documents by the time they make that appointment so it's very important to realize that this is a little bit of a lengthy process but filing in Italy is a lot less time than it is to file in the United States. So if you're getting discouraged and you're saying, you know, oh, I don't know if I can wait that long, I may just get the visa and do that. You can still get the visa if you want to while you're waiting for your citizenship or you're waiting for your papers. You don't have to wait for the citizenship to come over. Go to the consulate and apply for that visa. And then, you know, when you come here, if you decide that you want to stay, you can apply in Italy to stay a lot longer and then, you know, work it out however it works for you. So don't feel discouraged. It does take a little bit of time, but I promise in the end, once you have that Italian passport, you can go anywhere in the EU that you want. You can spend the winter in Spain if you want. You can go traveling all over the European Union. You won't need a passport. You won't need a visa now because even Americans going for their um, 90 days visit, or I think it's even less, they have to get a short-term visa application that's you know quick online. You won't need any of that, and you'll be able to come and go as you please and be able to just, you know, it makes things a lot easier. So I hope that this video helped you. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down in the comment section. And I look forward to our next video. I'm going to be doing some things on um, how to purchase a car in Italy and um, a little bit more on the house videos that we have some videos we want to share with everybody. So I hope this helped you. And until we see you again, take care. Ciao.